We all know that the current electric aircraft have a very limited range. So in this video, we're going to cover how the range of electric aircraft can be doubled by introducing an aerodynamic technique called distributed propulsion. And if you're looking to design your own aircraft, then we will also share what should be the optimal number of propellers for the best performance and point you towards the detailed articles. If you are new to the channel, subscribing to it will help you reach more such content. And if you find the video informative, it would be appreciated if you can give it a like. Now one of the benefits of having an electric aircraft is that distributed propulsion can be used to enhance the propulsive efficiency. Most purpose-built electric aircraft have taken a note of this as it is one of the ways through which the available energy gap between the fuel burning aircraft and battery run aircraft can be reduced. Simply retrofitting an electric motor in an existing airframe to replace an IC engine is never going to give the range one can achieve with a purpose built electric aircraft and therefore some efforts like the Magnix E-Caravan and the Haviland DHC2 electric Beaver will never come close to the performance of the Electra Aero the Airflow Model 100, NASA's Maxwell, or Regent Sea Glider. The clear difference is the use of distributed propulsion in the latter mentioned aircraft. In a distributed propulsion system, the goal is to have multiple engines instead of a single or a couple of large engines over the length of the fixed wing. This has multiple advantages which include higher propulsive efficiency and thus lower emissions smaller takeoff distances, better handling performance, and lower noise. Distributed propulsion is not a recent discovery. There were many aircraft in the past that had distributed propulsion, but it was out of necessity rather than a deliberate choice. This was due to the limitation of the maximum engine size to be used in a relatively large aircraft. The Dornier DOX in 1929 the Hughes H4 Hercules in 1947 are examples of that. In the jet age, blown flap technique was used, which is also a method of distributed propulsion. In the blown flaps, some of the compressed air was bled out of the jet engine and was released near the trailing edge along the length of the wing. This was done to improve the lifting performance of the wing at low speeds. The hunting H126 and the Lockheed F-104, Blackburn, Buccaneer, and some versions of MiG-21 utilized this technique, but it fell out of favor as additional maintenance was required to clean the ductwork and ensure the functioning of the valves. Come at the electric age and we have several aircraft now looking to benefit from distributed propulsion. Using an array of several small motors for this purpose gives multiple advantages. First comes from the fact that the specific power of smaller motors is higher. Or in other words, smaller motors have a higher thrust to weight ratio than their larger counterparts. Note that in a smaller motor, less power is being pushed. This means thinner wires are required and no liquid cooling system is needed to cool the motor. Smaller motors are also easier and cheaper to replace. And depending upon the number of propulsors, they can provide up to triple redundancy. By blowing the air over the wing at much higher speeds makes the aircraft relatively insensitive to gusts. This is a huge advantage as gusts can be of concern, particularly during takeoff and landing. Many of the modern electric aircraft developers have urban air mobility in mind. This has shifted the focus more towards the development of eVTOLs. While eVTOL aircraft can employ distributed propulsion systems, but for most of them, higher hovering efficiency necessitates the use of larger blades, which in turn implies a suboptimal distributed system. Take for example, Joby Aviation's S4. It has four propulsor on the wing with a blade diameter of almost 2.7 meters. If we compare that to NASA's Maxwell X57, it has 12 inner propellers of just 0.57 meters. So there are levels of distributed flow defined by a term called distributed flow intensity. It is classified from A to E based on the number of propulsion units as shown in the table. 
If we take away the requirement of vertical takeoff, then we can optimize the aircraft much better for a longer range. In short, electric aircraft face a steep trade-off between the demand for runway performance and range. The good news is that with distributed propulsion systems, the takeoff distance can be reduced to less than 30 meters and the takeoff and landing speeds can be as low as 48 kilometers per hour. There's a very simple formula to determine the takeoff distance. The takeoff distance is equal to 13 times the wing loading divided by the factor of the thrust to weight ratio and the lifting coefficient at takeoff. The W over A is the wing loading. We can increase the area of the wing to reduce the takeoff distance, but this results in extra drag penalty during cruise. The T over W is the thrust to weight ratio. And with small motors and props, the thrust to weight ratio is higher. The term CLTO here is the coefficient of lift during takeoff. It is this takeoff lifting coefficient that can be raised significantly by distributed propulsion. Values of over five have been achieved. This can be further enhanced by taking into account the propeller airframe interaction, or in other words, by designing the propellers for a particular wing and airframe, lift coefficient can be significantly increased. Recent work on propeller and wing interaction has shown that a total drag reduction of over 30% can be achieved by optimizing the wing cord and twist distribution behind a given propeller. See the link in the description. Another study that focused on a single as opposed to distributed propeller on wing interaction was able to show a 5% fuel saving by simultaneously optimizing both the propeller and the wing. NASA has concluded that theoretically it is possible to achieve five times more propulsive efficiency with distributed propulsion and propeller airframe interaction taken into account as compared to a conventional propulsion system driven by an IC engine at speeds of 175 miles per hour. Moore et al. in their study concluded that 8 to 16 propellers are ideal for almost all flight missions. It was found that in their conceptual study that a fully blown wing with propellers at the optimal diameter for the load, that is eight propellers for a 300 kilometer range, can reduce the takeoff distance by over 80% when compared to optimal two propeller case using the same models. There is over two times increase in the wing lift coefficient, which leads to a 36% reduction in lift off speed. Also, the optimal fully blown case produced 2.9 times more thrust during the takeoff over the two propeller case with only 11% increase in total aircraft mass. Dr. David Ullman conducted a comprehensive study in which he compared three types of aircraft, namely the rotorcraft, the EVTOL, and the EASTOL. He showed that EASTOL aircraft with less than 100 kilowatt hour of battery have nearly twice the range of comparable EVTOL. Even at 200 kilowatt hours, the maximum range for the EVTOL was found out to be 155 miles as opposed to 255 miles for EASTOL. This was evaluated based on 300 watt hour per kilograms battery energy density. So there's a definite advantage in pursuing EASTOL aircraft rather than going for VTOL capability. There is a certain romanticism with VTOL because of dreams of flying car but eSTOL would make practical range aircraft even with today's battery technology. A lot of cargo suppliers with access to airstrips have already realized this and therefore the first commercial electric aircraft are most likely to be for transferring cargo of up to 500 kilograms to short and medium distances. It is also true that very short takeoff and landing concepts would have significantly lower costs and that actual vertical takeoff and landing performance is only required in a narrow set of circumstances and that in most locations space for stall operations is available. And with this the video is concluded. If you learned something from it, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you for your attention.